What is up, everybody? How are you doing? I hope everybody's having a fine Sunday. Without further ado, I want to make sure that I take the time to play our usual trailers. But first, I want to thank you for being here on a Sunday and tell you we've got some fun art ahead of us today. So stay tuned and let's do this thing. You speak as though I have conquered death. I live death every day. I am surrounded by it. Smothered by it. Look at you now. You would have everlasting life. You seek to defy death. But you cannot even defy sleep. And how alike sleep is to death. It is a painted death. I remember childhood without any friends. Just me and my imagination. So I made up my own friend. Crim's my best bud. I don't know what I'd do without him. But there's some things we should keep locked away. Not the imaginary friends, but the imaginary fiends. Krim, where are you?
What is up, all you wonderful people? It's great to see you on this fine Sunday. I'm in a great mood today uh, because it's a day and uh, I'm in a great mood. That's what it is. Let me say hello to some fine people in the chat before we get started here. We're going to be working on one of those Nosfero trading cards and wrapping that up. I want to detail it and kind of roughed it in, but I wanted to make sure I had the book where I needed it to be. First and foremost, let me say hello to channel member and all-around rock star, General Piggy. Hail to you, sir. It is great to see you in the chat, my friend. Always a pleasure. And thank you for being a channel member and uh, having my back. Whoa, what the heck? Every time I click on something, I swear. Uh, let me see who else. We got Snuggy Jr., my main man. How are you doing, Snuggy? I am very excited about that direct message, my friend. So do not forget uh, that I am excited for one minute. I will get back in touch with you with my details very, very soon, my friend. Weird Beatnik, it is great to see you in the chat. I hope you are doing well, my friend. We've also got Paulus Arts in here. It's great to see you, Paulus Arts. We've got Sark in the house. Hail Sark. I hope you are doing well on this fine Sunday. We've got Siege Perilous. Siege Perilous, it is great to see you in the house. I hope you're having a great one, my friend. Let's see who else we've got in here. We've got my main man, my can of spam. It's all about money. We've got Steven Rockwood dropping links like Oscar Meyer in this chat. It is great to see you, my brother. I am very, very excited to have you here on this Sunday. I was just thinking about you today, interestingly enough. Um, let's see here. Uh, Duck Bacon, it's great. <laughs> I love Duck Bacon, man. It's great to see you. Hail to you, Duck Bacon, and excellent. I love the bacon, uh, duck, uh, skull and crossbones motif. It's great. We've got Sheeple Hunter in the house. Hail to you, Sheeple Hunter. It is great to see you, my friend. I hope you're having a good one. Uh, let's see who else we've got here. We've got Mr. Monkey Boy 1969. Mr. Monkey Boy 1969. It is great to see you, my friend. I hope you were doing well. Uh, let's see who else. If I missed anybody, people coming in late. Ah, oh, we've got channel member Hostman Socrates. Stephen Rockwood is also in the house. General Piggy is in the house. All of my channel members, it is great to see you. Thank you for your support. We have got my man, <laughs> Jeremy. Oh, my gosh. Jeremy Ice and Fire in the house. My brother from another mother from New England. It is great to see you, my friend. Oh, my gosh. It's always a pleasure, brother. It is always a pleasure, and I love the waffles, man. I got to bring the waffles back. We've got Neon Todd Studios. Neon Todd Studio, what is up, my friend? I hope you're doing well on this fine Sunday. We've got channel member and probably in the house. It is great to see you. That is right. Those waffles smell oh so good. You could tell from the look on her face, man. There was just something in the way she looked tonight. So, guys, this is what I've been working on. I had a... Um, it has been absolutely insane for the last couple of weeks getting Nosfero um, into in design, you know, going over the script and all of that kind of stuff. And one of the things... And I'm sure you guys know what I mean. One of the things that happens when you're at this particular stage in the process is that there's a certain amount of kind of going into your own head that you have to do. But there's one thing that I realized this week um, that I wanted to share with you guys because I'm sure that some of you guys have a problem like this and can relate. But when you're, when you're working for yourself and when you're working, you know, on a project and it's, you know, the whole thing is, is, you know, it's for you to go out there and promote it and do all that stuff, which is, of course, we all know this. Um, one of the things I suddenly realized is, is that I have not taken a break since the launch of this book. And I, I sat down and I thought, like, holy cow, like, how did I get here? I haven't taken a vacation. There. Actually, no, maybe I have taken a trip with my, my family somewhere. But I don't think, <laughs> I don't have to think about that. But I don't take time off, and it's something that um, I'm going to have to get better at and manage as time goes on, because you just cannot run yourself completely into the ground, although Lord knows I try. And I was sitting here thinking about it, what a relief it is, and I, I mean this in the best possible sense, to be wrapping this book up, because for so long, 
you know, I'd look in front of me and it was just like the work seemed so in, you know, just so immense. There was so much to do. And I think I'm going through the stages of realizing, holy cow, this is going to get, you know, like to the end and I'm going to be able to take a break uh, for like five minutes, maybe. So we'll see. Uh, moving day is finally upon me. Uh, let me. Actually, the chat was in the wrong place. Sorry. Was finally upon uh, um, upon me. I'm surrounded by paint and boxes. Just about to um, set to go for the morning. Oh, that's excellent, my friend. Well, good luck with the moving, man. That's big, man. That's a big thing. So when I'm working on um, when I'm working on this, and knowing how the book goes, and you know, knowing like I was laying it out today, and uh, or last night. What am I today? But last night. So I was up this morning. Um, or I was up till five o'clock this morning and then I got up at 10, uh, to get to work on a bunch of other things that I'm working on. Um, you know, that I, I, you know, all related to this, but I was working on Nosferu till about 10 at night or sorry, five in the morning. Um, and the thing that was so interesting about it was I had been looking for what I wanted to put into the book. I wanted to have a quote by HP Lovecraft in the book and, um, I had kind of zeroed in on what quote I wanted to be, but I found the qu perfect quote for the perfect moment in Nosferu, and it was just such a great feeling. I mean, I, I couldn't even get to sleep. I, I tried to go to sleep, but I was so excited about it and so excited about the book um, that it was just, oh man, it was amazing. So yeah, to say I'm excited about this book and getting it to you guys is an understatement. Um, Shanth, if anyone deserves a break after a long night's work, it's you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. But then I, I miss you guys. That's the problem. I run into missing you guys. It's it's a thing. Um, let's see here. Uh, Shanth, let me see. Oh, clicked on the wrong one. Uh, Shanth, I've been hoping to catch a stream I've um, live ever since Razor Fist comic book went live because I'm super hyped for it, and I knew you'd be really excited. I'm very excited, Neon Todd Studio. Very excited. Yeah, I messaged him, um, uh, I guess about a week ago, maybe. Um, to say what's up, and I'm excited, and it's great. Yeah, he's a good dude. Shanth, um, your horror master of sorts, you gotta check out the new, um, show From, um, on MGM Plus right now, Up Your Alley. I'll take your recommendations any day of the week, Jeremy. Uh, thank you for that, man. I'll absolutely check it out. Charlie Stevenson, it's great to see you. Hey to you, my friend, saying, hey, everybody. I think Nosferu would work as a, um, as a silent film, so do I. Love silent films. Love silent films. I actually got the, um, 4K remastered. Uh, the Man Who Laughs um, with uh, Conrad Veidt in it. And so I'm a big fan of, of old school or love that stuff. Um, channel member Hostman Socrates says, uh, and when the shadow uh, goes into public domain, you and Ray Fish should totally do a shadow animated series. I'm already working on a shadow story that I want to publish. That is awesome. Yeah, I love The Man Who Laughs. It is, it's an amazing story because The Man Who Laughs, even though it was the inspiration for The Joker... The Man Who Laughs is actually a, a heroic story. And that was like, it has a, a very positive ending for uh, the main character. And so I always thought that um, it's interesting to me that such a, a um, in many ways, such a, a really beautiful story about a character overcoming um, quite a bit, you know, as, as sort of be, you know, has become the foundation for one of the great, you know, pulp or comic book villains. But that's that's how it goes. I mean, I think sometimes the strength of our work um, lies in the the sort of the strength of of what we expose ourselves to. And I don't mean, guys, don't take that the wrong way, okay? Don't. I don't want anybody getting in trouble this weekend. It's it's Sunday. Come on now. Um, but <laughs> it's it's the way that we oh, old man humor. It's gonna get me in the end. Um, it's one of those things to where, as I'm I'm looking at Nosferu, there's so many things that have influenced it so many things that that you know i've i've you know that artwork that has inspired me and not not you know just contemporaries and that's the thing you know that that really fuels me at the end of the day yeah it's a love story you're absolutely right paulus arts it's a love story and it's it's um it's an unlikely love story and that's that's the thing about it too which is you'll find a lot of these these creators writers and filmmakers who had incredibly um, grew up during uh, or came into film and storytelling during incredibly dark and difficult times in our history were um, passionate about and expert at telling uplifting stories. And I do I don't think that um, I don't know how I feel about the idea of you have to have X experience to be able to do a particular thing. 
but I do think that there is a powerful kind of optimism that comes from uh, triumph over adversity because it's, um, it's not conditional optimism. It's not optimism or positivity because things are going your way. You don't seek for things to not go your way, but if you've experienced things that are incredibly difficult, there's this, um, there's this power behind your positivity, and I know that's the case for me. Um, I just I, I wake up every day grateful and passionate, and there's no way. I mean, the, the m amount of work in Nosfero, if I wasn't driven, disciplined, and if I didn't know how to work, when I'm, you know, tired, uh, and paint, uh, no matter how I'm feeling that day, there's no way that book would ever have gotten done. And now it's, it's, it's in that, the fun part. Uh, because I actually, even though I work in traditional, I really love the layout phase in InDesign, you know, and I love the writing phase, like of the word balloons. That's the fun part for me. It's really enjoyable. Uh, let's see, uh, careful Papa Susan is watching. Yeah, that's right. Um, let's see here. Uh, Hostman Socrates says, I gotta move this window because, um, sometimes the windows get into weird locations and I can't read the chat. Hang on a second here. I want to make sure I can make this. There we go. That's better. So now I can see the comments while I check to make sure I'm in frame. Um, let me see here. Uh, da, 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 da. where'd I go? Oh, here we go. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Um, Hostman Socrates. Yeah, that's a good idea. I love the shadow. I know in the nineties, um, What's going to be the Shadow cartoon in the style of Batman? Oh, there was going to be a Shadow cartoon in the style of Batman animated series, but never did. Hail to channel member, my homie, Ellie Munoz. Did you see I changed that in the credits to say my homie? I had to do it. Had to be done. It is great to see you, my friend. Happy Sunday. Yeah, Razor Fist, um, when I posted that, Razor Fist, um, you know, said, hey, we've got to we gotta do this when it goes in the public domain. And yeah, I mean, it's like if, um, yeah, if he wants to, if he wants to do it, I'm always game, man. That's the way it is. I mean, you know me. It's like um, I want to work with anybody who wants to work. And if, you know, if they've got the, the time and they've got the dime, we're the Bloodhound Gang. I don't know how that works. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's my attitude with everything. I mean, we're here. We're here to tell good stories. And we're here to be able to make a good living doing this stuff. And it starts, though, but it all starts with the work. It all starts with a story. Um, it all starts with the ideas and connecting with you guys. You guys have made this possible. That's what it is. Um, they made an uh, animated Red Sonja movie on um, of the Gail Simone stuff, and it was terrible. I don't doubt it. Aviator Surge, it is good to see you, my friend. Yes, indeed. Hey to you, brother. It's great to see you in the house. Uh, let's see here. Sark is saying, yes, Bloodhound Gang. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, hail Jonathan Jetty and chat. Hail to you, Skip Edwards. Thank you for being here. 21 people watching. Let's hit that like button. We're only at 11 likes. What is that? And guys, it is the only way we can push back against the algorithm. I know people say that stuff all the time, but it is, it's true. It's true. It's how they bury us. That we, we got to share the stream out. Got to get people to pop in, drop a like. Got to get people to watch. Got to let people, get people to comment. That is what it's all about. And it's, it's what sort of pays for the party. That and my amazing channel members, guys. I really do appreciate you guys supporting the channel. It is, um, it means a lot, and it it translates directly into what I'm able to do. And you know, it's like with the with the campaign closing soon, there's so much stuff that I am just incredibly excited about about where this is going. It's a great story, and the thing about it for me that that I've been thinking about a lot lately is. Because it was it was a part of the, the process when... Let me move the camera a little better here. Let's see, there we go. It was a part of the process um, when I started this was thinking about... Oh my gosh, Mighty Geek Studios was gifted a membership. You maniacs! Mason W. was gifted a membership by Improbi. Improbi, you legend! I'd look down for one second. Scottsley was gifted a membership by Improbi. We're going to have to update those credits. The Green Laser was gifted a membership. Awesome One was gifted a membership. Glad to have you guys back. Hail Skip Edwards, improbably gifted five Shantha Jetty Art memberships, and there's only one thing we can do. Charge! Oh, whoa. That's the Charge! That's hilarious. Hold on a second. That's my old, uh... <laughs> That's my, uh, when I showed Jericho last week. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let me go here. There we go. 
All right, so let me get to this one. But thank you so much. I have to tell you, man, I appreciate it. Let me do something real quick. I'm going to delete, whoa, delete that scene. Hopefully I won't destroy the whole thing. Then I'm going to take this and go to scene, duplicate current scene. There we go. And then I'm going to move this and go back here. God, watching old people in action. Isn't it great? Um, and move that down there. And so now things should work a lot smoother. But I just want to make sure I'm really clear about this. Holy cow, Bobby, that is absolutely amazing. And let me say, now use those custom emojis, guys. And let me say this. This one, I'm going to play this three times for you. <laughs> Great job smashing that like button, guys. But I was I was sitting here and I was thinking about, you know, just how we're able to affect change and how we're able to get this stuff done and how we're going to be able to grow this stuff. And I love this story and I love the stuff I'm doing, but I had a very particular strategy when I was developing No Sparrow. And it's an interesting one and it's something that um you know, good, bad, or different will will see we'll see what people what people make of it. And it's this storytelling philosophy I have that I want to tell a story, put it out there, have it be, you know, high, um, low page count, high plot, high quality, you know, art. And I want to see what people make of it because I do think that when you're introducing people to a world, my theory is, could be wrong, my theory is you want to give them just enough before you start explaining like, oh, okay, now this is where it's going to go. And I also am curious because, you know, there's a lot of stuff in this book that you guys have inspired me to do. You've inspired me by by talking about like, oh, I really like this character. I'm interested in this. And I might very well, you know, I might learn something throughout the process of releasing this book. And so I want you guys to have a self-contained story so that you can take a look at it. Because that's what I like to read. I like to read stuff that it's like there's a beginning, middle, and end. And I back a lot of different stuff, so it's not the only way it can be done, but that's the thing that's exciting. You guys will know the story. I've got the last page of Nosferu over there, guys. Oh my gosh, I'm loving how it looks. You know, and Improbi, you legend. You absolute legend. Everybody's saying hello, hello. Yeah, smash that like button, please, guys, please. Yeah, we should have as many likes as we got people in here, if at all possible. Um, let's see here. If, uh, smash the like <laughs> I can't <laughs> Oh my god, you guys are killing me. Uh, I forgot to allow gifts. Oh, no. Biden chomp. Not even kidding, man. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, he might have more mental faculties than me right now. For the gifted membership, that's true kindness. You're absolutely right. Postman Socrates, I told her she could get all her stuff out of the dumpster. Oh, my God. You guys are killing me. Yes, indeed. More people need to deeper dive into the wonderful world of Chomp than Jetty. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. So, I have been working on um, some just a lot of fun stuff because I, I want people who... What, what's the word I'm looking for? I want people who think that we can't get all these things done, that it's too difficult, to... I want to challenge their preconceived notions. And when I, I've been doing, you know, since the early days of, of CG, when I was doing, you know, those intro videos for Ethan, which I do want to update the Comics Geek Kings intro, there's so much stuff. No, Sparrow has obviously, you know, had to take the majority of, of my time and attention. But, um... But it's, it's one of those things to where I was starting to do limited type animated stuff. And I just thought, you know, and oh gosh, the wonderful stuff that Dying Days of YouTube was doing. Um, and it's probably still doing. Um, but uh, it's I saw that stuff and I just thought, why are we, you know, with uh, Roach Balls and all of that, why are we not, um, you know, why are we not doing animated stuff and making them go, oh crap, what if they start doing animated stuff? And I think it's, it's so important. Uh, gosh darn it every time I push that button uh, it is great to see you skunk artworks how are you doing I think we're all doing pretty well the wonderful world of Shant and Jetty sounds like a movie yeah that's that's the hope man I'm working on a um, an animation right now of um, of uh, of Molly um, who gets pushed out on stage because the the fan dancing act they hired uh, has not come and it's influenced by um, uh, Sally uh, is it Sally or Sarah? I think it's... Oh, shoot. I have to try to remember now. Rand, who was the famous uh, kind of Hollywood fan dancer back in the day. She was in a Warner Brothers cartoon. And just exploring things like run cycles and acting and all of that stuff has been something really fun to do at the end of the evening when I just can't move to paint. But I've never stopped thinking about how we can 
Because what if we inspire somebody by anything we do? Like, this is the first, you know, really fully painted comic book in Comicscape. And I just thought, you know, what if we ins I inspire somebody else to try to do something, you know, or I do something that gets to the point to where I can bring other people on board and make it bigger? It all starts with, you know, sticking your chin out and trying these things. And it's it's that's what it comes down to. You've got to do it. And so that's why I've been so um, so focused on just thinking about what I can do every single time. And, and the most important thing is Nosfero has got to look fantastic, man. It's got to look fantastic. Uh, Hail Aviator Surge for my fellow Jetty fans. I wish I could do way more. Oh my gosh, you do so much, man. I appreciate it. I'll fan dance for enough bananas. I'm the same way. 100%. Um, unless it's Japanese. Yes, 2D animation is a dying art. You're absolutely right. Um, are we in uh, season two of CG Kings? I feel like it's season one is a never-ending season. But yes, we do have season two stuff. But um, one of the things, one of the, the creatures that I um, designed that I'm really excited about is the eldritch creature that is responsible for the creation of the vampires. And it is such a creepy, bat-like, six-eyed beast. And when you see it in the book, it, it just it had to be the creature that you could imagine. If there was a Lovecraftian creature that came into our world and bit a human being and was responsible for vampires, that's it had to look great. And that's been the fun thing, you know, for me. I'm not paying for those bananas, says Stephen Rockwood. Stephen Rockwood is putting his foot down. Um, and so, yeah, I really want to make great monsters, great creatures. And I want this book to be something that you guys can talk about, show to people, or, or pass along to people. You know, if you if you buy an extra copy and you want to share it with people, um, or if you want to buy an extra copy to flip it and say, I was there then, sorry you suckers missed it. Um it's, I want it to be something that people can look at and get into. So again, it's got the se sexiness, the mystery, the danger, all of that stuff. And uh, it's just, I, I did a painting, uh, when I was looking at the painting I did, I should say, for um, the last page of the book. It's such a classical, beautiful figure painting of Laurel. And I just thought, this is everything I've wanted in comics for so long. You know, I've wanted... I've wanted our comics to have the kind of the artistic quality of what I see. I, first of all, to have all the things I love about American culture. First and foremost, you got to give it up. It's our art form. Then I wanted to have the kind of um, the freedom of, of subject matter that manga enjoys. And then the illustrative quality that the best Bond SNA has. And it's, it's not like it's a particularly calculating thing. It just comes out of my love of Frazetta, my love of Richard Corbin, my love of Mobius, and and just wanting to make comics that are entertaining again. Stuff that's not... It, my comic... How do I put this? My comic, I want it to be enjoyable and enriching without making excessive demands of you. Because for me, when I'm doing entertainment, I don't want it to be something that is just like, you know, I don't want it to feel like homework. You know, that's the main thing. And I feel like a lot of political entertainment these days really feels like homework. Um, let me see here. Um, da -da -da. Uh, Hostman Socrates says, Good mainstream movies are really scared of portraying any kind of racism. Absolutely. Unless it's gay, then they just make it uncomfortable. You're absolutely right. Third fan dancing monkeys. You're absolutely right, man. Yeah, it's... it's it's. I, I would say this, is that they're... For, like this is a crazy thing so Aaron uh, Lepresti just posted a, a video I think the other day because he had just gotten the Frazetta book my wife ordered me the Frazetta book for Valentine's Day and my copy came the same day it's over there and when I look at that stuff I just go holy cow like that's that's what I'm doing that's what this is and I have to go back in history to find you know illustrators and artists who are doing this kind of work but there was a time when there was just a ton of it. And Frazetta had that sort of that sexiness, that power, that danger, that mystery. Uh, so did Steranko. Thank you, Phil, again for that wonderful book. And th I think that's exactly what um, that's exactly what Razor Fist is doing with his book. Shout out again, man. Um, <laughs> Shoff is best in life. 
That's true. Shanf is best in life. Uh, to crush your enemies. No, that's what is best in life. Shanf is best in life. Uh, the chat. The chat is what makes uh, Shanf's life the best. Uh, yeah, it's. I, I will tell you this, guys. Um, yeah, Incall is amazing. Yeah, um, the Incall is delicious in its artwork uh, and bizarre in its story, but in a good way. You're absolutely right. And I guess that's where my story is very British and very American in that sense. Because it's very much like a Hammer Horror movie. It is a absolutely delicious meal that is... It, it's enough to be incredibly satisfying, but it's... Um, the only thing you're going to um, have to gorge yourself on is the art. The story is just going to um, fill your head with possibilities of what more could happen in this world. That is my hope. But it is not to tell you next week on Nosferu. It is not to do that. Next week on Nosferu will come, but it is not going to be a cliffhanger. It is going to be a resolution that makes you excited to see more. That is the plan. And that's what makes it a blast. But little things like this... Gosh, i got to move my camera. Sorry, guys. Little things like this, little details like this smoke, and all stuff that I get from my love of, of Art Nouveau, Mobius, Frazetta, Richard Corbin. These are the things. I did this, this stonework, guys, for a page of Nosferu that I am so happy with um, that it, it's, it's for you guys, man. It's for you guys. It's like, imagine you're going to a, um, imagine you're going to a theme park and they do really great rock and stonework. Take a look at this right here, this stonework, right in here that I painted. I was so unbelievably excited, um, and that's not really doing the colors justice, but I was so unbelievably excited when I created that, and I was like going, this is going to be such a killer sequence because of that love of that stuff, you know, the love of, of the detail and that that... Um, immaculate reality that we're creating here. What's up? Hail Phil. It's great to see you, my brother. I hope you are doing well. Um, John is in the house. What's up, John? Catching up on 10, um, catching up 10 minutes out. Awesome. We look forward to having you here. A painting in motion. Amen. Um, I picked up a copy of the Frazetta um, verse for free comic book day. Yes, Sarah is great. She was talking about that. I think she was talking about that with Richard Friend. I could be wrong. Um, the key to the universe you are creating is the first paragraph. Yeah, absolutely right. It is. That is. And the book starts with that. The book starts with that. And then there's another intermission that is, um, or not intermission, but there's another, well, it is kind of an intermission dialogue page, which is the Frazetta quote. And that is on page 14. And it's important because um, H.P. Lovecraft has, uh, I mean, he's fine. He's dead. He's going to be all right. But his reputation as, as a, as, or his contributions as a writer of weird fiction have been completely torn to pieces, not because anyone was ever confused about what kind of person H.P. Lovecraft was, except for noobs, um, but because people are spiteful and resentful of people's talents, so they attack them in the ways in which they can make themselves look more favorable. And as somebody who has benefited tremendously from H.P. Lovecraft's work, which transcends his own personal beliefs, and, or not personal beliefs, I don't even know he knew what he believed. He was a very confused man. There's no getting around it. But I felt like I wanted to do a bold, in-your-face shout-out to the man, because when you're listening to Dunwich Horror, or you're listening to The Shadow Over Innsmouth, he cites uh, passages um, at the start of those books. Um, he... Um, he has passages from the people he admired. And it seemed right for me, right before I go into um, the Egypt segment of the story and the backstory, to pause for a second and quote The Nameless City, one of my absolute favorite, favorite books. What is up, Michael? It is great to see you. Hail to you. And yes, indeed, hail to the chat. Thank you guys for being here. Make sure you hit that like. I appreciate it. It really does matter. We got to attack that that algorithm any way we can because we're trying to build stuff. And the hardest thing in the world, this is why you guys, I, I know I tell you guys this a lot, but the reason you guys are so important is because to make a book, I know you know this because you've been with me from the start. You know, you guys who are like, support is more, I mean, the backing of the book is of course essential. And it is of course the most important thing because it pays for the party. The channel memberships are of course the big important thing 
that pays for the YouTube show. How this is I can't overstate this. But you guys are 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 my shield when I go out into this place trying to create content because we don't have some gigantic machinery behind us helping us. We're building it ourselves. It's just me. I'm the guy who does the videos. I'm the guy who edits the books. I'm the guy who does the script. And my missus. Did you just say something from the other room? <laughs> I thought I heard my wife go, me? <laughs> yeah, my wife is helping me too. But it's, I have to be out there and make this stuff happen. Uh, let's see here. I'm working on my, oh my God, Phil. Oh, bless you. Channel member Mighty Geek Studio says, Lovecraft's racism was the skeleton key to his imagination on horror. You're, guys, you, the shadow over Innsmouth is the most articulate um, um, description of what it felt like for him. And I remember going, wow, I understand this so much better because of him. Uh, Sean at John Hale, always great to see y'all. Absolutely great to see you, my friend. Uh, I bet I'll bet you are, Phil. That was that was great. I'll bet you have. Uh, let's see here, Paulus Arts Hale, always great to see you. Yeah, lots of love in the chat, guys. So this is the thing, right? If people are in this bizarre state right now of closing, allowing other people to paint people, dare I say, no pun intended. Um, paint people with a broad brush stroke and try to make people preemptively dismiss them before they figure out what in there was either good or great and could enrich their lives. So they give you the worst examples of people. They give you the worst examples of things and they say, you should dismiss this entire concept and you will never be able to change the fact that the foundation on which weird fiction, you know, sits is thoroughly Lovecraft. And the um, wanting to revise, I don't know when we got so um, incapable of dealing with reality and history, but I've always thought that the purpose of imperfection in, in history in many ways is not to tear them down, but to realize that not being perfect is not an excuse for not working hard and contributing to the best of your abilities. If perfection is the bar everybody's going to fall short of it. Do you know what I mean? Yes, indeed. Uh, Hostman Socrates channel member says, happy Sunday and drink lots of um, vitamin C. Um, uh, is it Vic Bitter? Oh, Vic Bitters and liquid forehead. I, I got you. I got you. Let's see. Hello at Michael Bancroft. Is he here? Oh my gosh, Michael, out of nowhere. Oh no, I missed 30 minutes of listening to Grimes. You're allowed to listen to Grimes. It's important. That's right. Five minutes out. It's like, and closing. And closing. But I look at this stuff, and I think, um, I just think that the genius is really what we're after. The genius is what we're after. I mean, um, the people who've, who've been a profound influence on me as, as authors and, you know, creators, and who, I, who didn't even share the planet with me at the same time, people like C.S. Lewis, people like Ayn Rand, people like H.P. Lovecraft, I could not... Um, think of people with different kinds of thought and frankly most of those people who were successful hung out with courteous respectful hard-working people who had a different approach to things and sometimes that's not useful but when you are able to implement things like that it can be tremendously useful so going back to the animation speaking of animation Michael also does animation I have lots of friends in the animation industry and the thing for me is is that if we show people, um, we you're not going to beat the polish on people, except for when you're doing stuff like this. With Nosferu, I feel like I'm uh, good. You know, they can I'll, they can bring it if they want to bring it. Um, but with animation, um, you're not going to beat you know their production pipeline, the amount of people they have working, and the resources they have behind them. But you can do things they wouldn't think to do. You can do things in those old Warner Brothers, Merry Melodies, um, cartoons, and Silly Symphony cartoons, for that matter that they wouldn't touch now, which is to say um, hilarity, you know, comedy, things that South Park does as a matter of course, but bringing that into the pulp stories that they think are too passe. And that's ultimately what I'm doing with Nosferu. Nosferu is, one, because it has been funded and because the work has been funded, that's the main thing I always think it's important to stress. It's not the, the book, it's the work that is the thing that makes the book possible. Uh, that you guys are funding, um, I'm able to create without restrictions like the ones they impose. And that's what makes this great, man. That's what makes what we're doing here great. Ayn Rand was a psycho in her personal life, but that doesn't mean <laughs> I'll dismiss her philosophy for that. Yeah, 
I mean, it's like all of these folks were completely different in their own ways, but that work of fiction and the philosophy is incredible. Um, what's his name? Uh, Nerd Rage did a video about Lovecraft and uh, clearing his name probably a couple of years ago. Oh, no kidding. Um, Shanth with uh, gouache, I can put down a yellow base and paint a green line over it, leaving the clear green line on the yellow basic watercolor would instantly bleed the green and yellow into a new color we got to make sure that it um it dries and what i'm doing right now is i'm actually using acrylic washes on this so this isn't gouache but you can um i'm using heavy body acrylics which much like gouache has a higher um pigment uh ratio in it pigment and opacifier ratio so it allows me to do coats but when i water it down it allows me to do washes so I found it to be a really nice, happy medium. But yes, with gouache, as long as the um, you get your water to pigment ratio right so that there's not excess water, excess water will reactivate other paint. Whereas if you get your mix perfect, um, there's only enough water to make the paint on top flow. And so yes, you can do that absolutely with gouache. I have 50% of the pages in this book are gouache, 50% are um, acrylic, and then there's a little bit of both on some of those pages because I like to, to kind of work back and forth on it. You know, and that's because I'm interested in giving you guys detail and an immaculate reality with this book. That's the biggest thing, you know, that I'm, I'm shooting for right now is just to make sure that everything is beautiful. Um, let me see here. Hello, hello, uh, Aviator Surge. Um, what's the name? Uh, what's his name? Nerd Rage. Got that one. Um, Ayn Rand. Got that one. Got that one. My little sister loves Silly Symphony cartoons. I do too. Bow to Mrs. and Jetty, says John. Indeed, she appreciates that, my friend. Um, let's see here. Hey, Aviator Surge. Shanth, I just got a watercolor set. Kelsey inspired me to try coloring that way. Excellent. That's so great. And hail Kelsey. It's great. It's great to see someone else doing paintings, man. Nosferu is the monster that hunts the monsters for the greater good, a genre that has been lost for over 300 years. You're absolutely right. Please, 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 please convince Cecil to get the comments, um, which time out. Gotcha. 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 Michael Bancroft, verisimilitude. Yeah, verisimilitude is important. Um, it's, it's, it's such a funny thing, right? Because there's two aspects to it. There's the believability, the verisimilitude, and then there's uh, to what end. And I think with me, I want to free up as many, uh, things as I possibly can so that you guys can have fun. And it's funny too, because I was, Michael, I was looking at that cover, which I love. Um, it, I, it's so, it's so breathtaking. Um, the, the oranges in it, the rich colors. And I was thinking, while the detail is extraordinary in that, the thing that I enjoy is that the aesthetic, which is that thing that hits you immediately, that compositional aesthetic, is, is so immediate. It's so, it's so I have this great aesthetic experience, and then I fall into the details. Very much like your writing, dare I say. And that's what's so fun about it. Uh, let's see, uh, at Michael Bancroft, I think they have um, <laughs> poisons for those now. Most popular is the Woke brand. You're absolutely right. Um, Sean uh, Bancroft throwing big words again. Yeah, he's got to. He's got to. Caught up. Awesome, John. Um, South Park is really cathartic as well. Yeah, nobody has <laughs> shit with you two just shut up and go away. Yes, exactly. Well, and that's the thing, too, about it, right, is that um, the greatest thing that um the greatest trick the devil ever pulled no the greatest trick that um the woke ideology and the neo-marxist ideology we'll just call it marxist pulled is to get people to self-censor their enjoyment so there's people who see things and they're like excited about them and they want to talk about them and be excited but then they think well how can i am i allowed to be excited about this am i allowed like and this this goes to the the heart of why the arts aren't speaking to people anymore because art school students um, are pushed into a state of never-ending questions and never-ending questioning which C.S. Lewis covers very well in the screw tape letters is a way to feeling like everything is pointless nihilistic because things don't end and that's why I think one of the things that makes a creator productive you know, and why I'm on, you know, art book three, for God's sake, uh, or should I say book three, comic book one and um, third book, is because I don't question forever. Like, I, I, go, I set up a task, I set up a story I need to tell, and it is, it has a, a, a there, there's a end game in sight. 
And it doesn't mean that end game is on a calendar or a slide rule because I try to say to myself, all right, I've got a set amount of things I want to accomplish. Because for me, that's not going to get the best stuff. But um, for me, not for everybody. And so I kind of have that attitude. And I understand that um, that if you get into a, a mindset where you, th you lose sight of what you're doing in its most basic sense, it's easy to never get the thing done because you're just asking questions. But they're not actually good questions because they don't have answers. They're questions for the sake of questions. And when I ask um, a question, it's immediately filtered through the, is this pragmatic, you know? Yeah, Godless is a miserable miserable price, absolutely. Kaiser Soze, that you, that's right. All right, detective, you've twisted my arm. His name was Cat Branchman. Michael will get that joke. Uh, yeah, Marxism is a satanic fitting analogy. Yeah, there you go, uh, 100%. Um, let's see here, yeah, analysis paralysis. And this is the thing, right? Analysis is, um, actual analysis has a um, has a goal in mind. So if you go into um, a doctor in the emergency room and you're trying to get help, the doctor has to ask questions to get the proper diagnosis, but they can't ask questions forever or they could lose the patient. So at a certain point, your questions have to be designed around productivity. And what is the goal? To entertain in this case. What is the goal in medicine? To save lives. And so for me, I think that, that that's why I have so much admiration for stand-up comics, uh, shout out to Minnie, um, because you learn in the most brutal way possible what does and doesn't make people laugh. You know, it is very, very difficult to um, entertain, and it's, it's, you know, people in that particular way, because people know when something isn't funny, just like people know when something isn't beautiful. And that's why it's so important to have a goal in mind and not have it be there's so many people who don't ever ask anybody out on dates don't ever send their artwork off to um, apply for to see if they get a freelance job because they're worried about rejection but you've got nothing anyway so what are you worried about if you get rejected you've got what you already had and you you can't think about that if if this book never comes out then all of the gosh i can't even imagine that thousands and thousands and thousands of hours i put into it were pointless so I might as well have never started it, but to maintain your discipline, which is something I'm, I've always been very good at um, in terms of, of my art. I would have quit making artwork a long time ago um, if it was based on, uh, you know, just uh, it being easy. Or I would have stopped growing as an artist if it was just based on, you know, <laughs> not, not having any drive. But I'm very disciplined about um, how hard I work, and I always say to myself, I could do better. I always think, okay, I can do better. And I have a clear idea of what that is. And I have a, um, I have a list of priorities and things that are important to me. And I go about them in a very disciplined way. But I don't give myself um, permission to ruminate and subject other people to just the pure rumination for no reason. Because I think that's indulgent and I think it's decadent. And, um, and for me, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I, I can't even think in that way. Like Nosferro, no, to me, Nosferro is a failure if it doesn't come out. That's it's 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 guaranteed failure. I don't understand that that that. I understand how one can get into that situation, but I would tell anybody, don't try to make the greatest book of all time. That way, in that way, lies madness. Try to make a book that gets done. Yeah, never expect to entertain everyone. Absolutely, that's right. Branch Catman, there it is, right there. <laughs> Are you not entertained? Absolutely, Hostman Socrates. Thank you for being a channel member. Um, I suffer from analysis paralysis. Yeah, guys, get, get going. That's all you got to do. Just do it. Get, Nike said it once. Yeah, entertain everyone or be a good entertainer. Pick one. Yes. And that's the other thing about it, right? Is that um, I don't need every, you know, I don't need every person. You Gosh, you can, you can make an incredible career. Um not having everyone like your stuff for heaven's sake um because that's a lot of people you can't have a career having no one like your stuff and you can't have a career um you know if you say to yourself deliberately you like my stuff you want to like what i do but i don't like you for some ridiculous arbitrary reason you know it everything should be you know merit-based in that regard and so for me um 
my whole you know purpose when I'm doing this stuff. Adjust this so I get a little bit of a better angle there. There we go. See a little bit more of the texture there. Um, my purpose when I'm doing this stuff is I'm going to give you more paintings than I've given my art book for about the same price. And I'm going to give you a story and the paintings are going to be better. That was the main thing I was focused on with this book. And the story is going to be uplifting, positive, and it's going to this part of the story of this part of the story. This story involving these characters is going to end at the end and future adventures will be determined um, by what your reaction is, by what your reception is to it. Like if nobody, and I'm saying, I'm going back in history to when I first met Michael, for God's sake, which I <laughs> texted him about or messaged him about um, yesterday. I didn't know if this book was going to even, like, I assumed it would fund because my other books had funded. But I had no idea we would be where we are right now. None. None. Uh, YouTube channel members, monetization, all of that stuff has been a massive part of the work I've been doing. And you can work really hard and people not connect with what you do. And I've had enough experience in the industry of, in, in terms of uh, concept art and certainly in education and, and all that other stuff and dealing with, you know, audiences at lectures at, you know, Microsoft Games or, or you know, Hasbro or any of the places I've ever gone and, and talked about my character design theories and things like that. So I've, I've had enough experience with that stuff, but you just don't know. And if I went into this thinking... Oh, well, this is going to be easy. I'm going to say I'm comic skate. And then, you know, everybody's going to come and back me. Just be like, oh, my Lord. I actually have the exact opposite opinion. That I would have to build every single thing. And it, you're just happier with that. John Malin was really great about explaining that stuff. So, shout out to John and much appreciation. Oh, the Pit Omnibus. Holy cow. 30th anniversary is coming soon. Are you guys serious? I haven't even heard this yet. Gosh, I have been so unplugged working on Nosferu. Jonathan Jetty Art, a lot of um, grim, dark stories are uh, neutered because they try to appeal to a mass audience, absolutely, instead of the people who were interested in it in the first place. You're absolutely right. Um, still criminally underfunded is Nosferu. So many are going to be pissed they missed it. I think that when the book starts uh, shipping out, it's going to create a lot of trust, a lot of trust for my next launch. So I am, I'm confident, but I still want to get those numbers up. You're absolutely right, John. Um... Thank you, channel member Mighty Geek Studios. The, um, those that don't like your stuff, um, if they are honest, will tell you what is missing for them. Yes, exactly right. Um, I guess the accolades from everyone is the same as accolades from no one. Yes, absolutely right. Yeah. Um, let's see. Coach is going to coach. Amen, John. Hail, Sean. Hail, 40% Zed. It's great to see you, my friend. How are you doing? Thank you for being here, guys. Please make sure you hit the like because that algorithm is really... It can be a little... I got to be honest with you. Um... Because everything else I've been saying is a lie, apparently. Um, <laughs> but it can be a little soul-crushing when you're you're working really hard on stuff, which is kind of the game, right? Is The game is to kind of demoralize. Um, when, you know, you see yourself getting throttled in real time, and you can't let it affect what you do. You just have to keep going. But believe me, uh, when you guys share out the link, when you guys, um, you know, become channel members, when you guys hit the like, it all helps tremendously it's a tremendous help for me and what i'm doing and that to me is 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 priceless let me see if it happens if i oh that's cool i just turned on the the camera light and it color corrected a little bit so that's nice i always like to see that because it can be I'm trying to be the cameraman and the director and the moderator and the artist at the same time sometimes it's a little bit a little bit dicey but you guys know you're comfortable with my uh Razor sharp Joe Biden mind. Um. <laughs> you guys crack me up, man. Happy Sunday, Cranberry Langers. It is great to see you, my friend. Absolutely great to see you. Um, the motto of the comics gator, always be a discerning customer unless boobas are involved. Absolutely. That's why I did what I did. So that's, the, that's I plead guilty. Hail everybody. Um, is this a new page? Shout? I thought you were done. No, this is uh, not a new page. This is a trading card. Um, yeah, the book is the book is you know in InDesign and being written and pages are being shuffled. The only painting I'm doing on the book is if I need an edit, like if I go ah, I want a little bit more value there. Pretty much, I you know what's what's interesting is because of the things ultimately get put together in digital. I don't know if the the final process is as different as people think it is because I don't know, Michael. Let me know. But when you're working on 
the 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 putting together of the book i'm sure do you ever alter like art a little bit to make the the you know the flow better for wording or something because i know i do i definitely do that um and so but it, it's yeah i mean it's it's right there it's it's the all of the pages i have i have a drawer dedicated to when i'm absolutely done with a page like which is to say i never want to look at it again um i put it in the drawer because <laughs> i'm like i don't even want to see it i don't want to see it because i have it all in indesign and the only time i want to get a page out is if i'm like oh i think i need to kind of move something or put that over there because i'm not going to do that in digital i do that in traditional because i want the finished um pages in the book to look like the finished original artwork because I, that's important to me you know i'm not i'm, I'm photoshopping i you know i i you know, remove dust and things like that. But I want it to be there, you know? Yep, I edit right up into the bitter end. Yeah, it's because we are, we're it. Like, we're responsible for all of it. These are handcrafted in a way that is just unbelievable. And yeah, Michael, I, I figured you did. I mean, just the complexity of what you do seems like that'd be the case. But I think that's true. It's always complex. Yeah, um, you shouldn't have any trouble then. Absolutely, I, I'm not with that. <laughs> um, hey, Cranberry Langers, noise. Absolutely right. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, um, Mel B has to pry it away from you. That's right. Well, you know they always say there's there's two people involved in the creation of any great work of art. I think it was John Singer Sargent who said it, which is the artist and a person who stands behind them with a, a big beam or a piece of wood to knock them over the head and take it away from them before they kill it. And um, I think there's something to be said for that, but as, as any of us in, in this space can tell you, um, we have to have the discipline to be both of those people most times. Like we have editors in some cases and, you know, people who help us out. I'm sure we have, you know, friends and family and, and everything like that. But at the end of the day, um, you've got to, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, got to know when to walk away, know when to run. You never count your money, okay? And you're sitting at the table. Because there'll be time enough for counting when the dealing's done. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. That's the way it is. That's just the way it is. Uh, let's see here. I'm... Let me see here if I adjust my glasses here. I'm going to be the owner of the only traditional Michael Bancroft art. Uh, there you go. That's what it is. I'm like knocking this around. Hang on a second. Let me adjust this camera. There we go. It's a little bit easier now. A little bit easier. There we go. Uh, let's see here. Um, da, 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 da. You should be as sharp as Nosferos blade. That is the key. That is the key. Changing the layout of a drawing to make space for the word bubbles. Yeah. Uh, well, it's it's funny. It's um, I. It's not even making space. It's pushing. So ugh, it's so hard to describe. Sometimes I want to throw a texture somewhere because I want the option of the word word balloons to be there because I want to give Eric options. Um, and I'm and the fun thing about what I'm doing is I write with word balloons because that I can't you can't think of at least for me anyway I can't think of comics as just a script uh, I have to be thinking about it in terms of word balloons and that's the way I, I think better but I think it's really helpful because a lot of people when they think about lettering over my work it can be kind of daunting and I want to you know remove that concept and show how comfortable I am with covering things up because it's really about how it all works together. And of course, um, when you've got someone like Eric Weathers, he's a painter as well. So he understands, you know, art incredibly well. And of course, he's the best letterer in the business as far as I'm concerned. So there you go. Yeah, you got to <laughs> no behave. Yeah, arted to death. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, hold on. I think Kenny Rogers is calling. You're absolutely right. Jonathan Jetty Art, uh, case in point, I got the uncensored James Bond novels with the sexy Bond babes on the cover to boot. Yes, were those the, were those the ones done by Robert McGinnis, or was there somebody else who, who did those? I can't remember. And that's why The Way of the Gambler. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it's definitely a one-of-a-kind for now. <laughs> Stephen Rockwood drawing, says Michael, the original art. Jonth the Gambler, absolutely. Um, I know what you're talking about. That's right. Cover up. <laughs> Is Jonth getting modest? Yeah, I know. I'm not. No offense, everyone, but I hate that song. <laughs> it's Cranberry Langers. It's all right, my friend. It is all right. It is all right. And so, yeah, this is one of the um, this is one of the trading card pieces. And um, what I wanted to, it's kind of a strange thing because it takes a. The last sort of push on a comic book takes a lot of, and a book in general, 
takes a lot of energy and it's I don't ever want to I want prefer it's the same thing with everything I want to be clear of all the other things I have to do or at least the hard work of other things the hard creative lift, lifting before I go on to the next thing and I got to a point on these these um, these trading cards I was doing where I said I need to I need to give myself God my camera work is garbage today um, I need to work on the um, I need to work on the books artwork because for me there's um, so much of what makes the book what it is is in the painting of it it's in the creation of it like I don't treat my books as if um, the words and the art are doing the same thing that it's this perfect 50 50 kind of scenario because it's not sometimes the words are there to activate the pictures and sometimes they're um, they're the, the the pictures are, are still in the show but that but they work together I actually I do my paintings my comic book stuff um, I I write it in my head I put <laughs> I put pictures in my head and I imagine the characters uh, talking as I'm painting them so it's it's weird it's not a, a process where everything is completely separated if that makes sense you know it's it's something that is um, they're they're tied together so it's it's I have to kind of really focus to do it and that's what I think that's why um, you know comics have evolved to have in many instances multiple creators but if you look at um, if you look at the people who do all the stuff it is you, you just got to go inside of your head and, and make the stuff happen and that's the kind of comics I want to make like that's the stuff I really want to do is I want to make stuff that is um, is 100% from me to you guys like, that's that's how it's designed and so that's how we got to where we got to with Nosfero. I mean, this book is from from concept to um, to finish has been me, you know, with me, the paper and you guys hanging out in the chat. That's that's what it has been. And and that's and, and it started with me, you know, just hanging out in the fandom menace and comics gate streams and then, you know, launching my art books and then thinking, wonder what would happen if I launched a comics gate project? I wonder what would happen, you know? a lot of prayer um just lots of stuff and um and here we are here we are it's incredible it all sort of starts with with dream and ride or die fans channel member tammy hey it's great to see you hey john good to see you there you go hail tammy a welcome back indeed says improvi um hello tammy a good to see you julie pascal hi john hail shanth and chat family hail to you tammy how was your move by the way um, has it been, uh, have you been unboxing? Um, learned when studying scuba diving, the preparation is part of the excitement and anticipation. You're absolutely right. Hi, Sean. Hail chat. Hail to you, Julie. You gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Um, my dad loves that song. Yeah, I grew up listening to that on an A-track player. So, there you go. Yeah, I was, oh my god. We had a Kenny, uh, Kenny Rogers A-track that we could play on this toy robot we had. It was a weird... I forget what the robot was called. It was something really weird. This is a gray robot with, I think, kind of like red eyes, but I'm not sure. It's kind of creepy. But it was a robot A-Track player that could do, you know, so it could, like, teach you stuff, I guess. I don't know. And um, we used it as just an A-Track player. And we had some A-Tracks. Let's see here. And there you go. Boom. Getting that all together. But yeah, I mean the um, seeing Nosfero in InDesign is. I, I was talking to a friend of mine recently, and he said, "How are you doing today?" And I said, "I'm excited." And I said to him, "I said, have I ever said that before?" He goes, "No, you've never said that." And I was like, "Wow," because I'm usually like, "I'm all right, man," but yeah, I'm excited. It's it's this is this is. Whoops, sorry guys, I mean to hit the speaker there. This is the um, this is the end. Oh, that's not going to work. Hold on a second. How can I move? There we go. This is the end result of so much work, so much work, and I'm really starting to get into the zone where I'm letting myself say, "Yeah, it's kind of okay to be kind of proud of this work, <laughs> proud of what you've accomplished," because it has been a lot, and I worked and continue to work my tail off on this YouTube channel. Um, but just spinning plates again. It's like um, when I'm not when you guys aren't seeing me on a stream your support 
is still with me and I want to be on a stream, it's because I'm writing or I'm lettering or I'm building something out all with trying to, you know, make sure that entertainment and you guys are what I'm focused on um, and making really cool stuff. And I think I think this is the thing I'm probably the most proud of. Nosferu is an incredibly cool book. It's really cool. Like, it, uh, it's going to give you a great feeling um, when you have it. You're going to go, this is awesome. This is really cool looking. Um, Nosferatu, Creature of the Night. Nosferatu, Darkness Kills the Light. Absolutely. Boxes in the garage. I know it. I know it. Hang in there. Moving forward is always exciting. Yes, it is. I can't lift heavy stuff. Been there. Channel member Stephen Rockwood the first, the Alpha, the Omega. My sisters and I had one. Oh, yes. It was the 2XL robot. Oh, my God. Um, due to skill or permission. I'm, I've got to think about that. Um, it was great, and yes, here a month, and still can't park in the garage. Understood, understood. Yeah. Oh, I know what you were saying. God, I got it. Timmy, I'm so slow. Um, yeah, <laughs> that is absolutely great. Um, does the character have a mouse costume in the closet? Yes, they do. Oh my gosh, Tammy, you're going to appreciate this. I When I was coming up with uh, Muggsy Rat, um, the wink and a nod uh, character, I was thinking of that, and I was laughing my head off. Literally. Not like the Chuck E. Cheese gal. Um, <laughs> that had her head off. That was so creepy. Uh, yikes, man. That's some scary stuff. Yeah. I was like, I still think about that and go, wouldn't you think if you were going to flirt with a guy that you would just, like, not be Chuck E. Cheese from the neck down um, while your friend is standing there going... Oh, uh, yeah, my friend wants to talk to you. And I, I'm like, what the hell is happening? This is the... Uh, that is... Uh, I, I would love to say only in Chattanooga, but I fear that's not the case. Bless bless that girl wherever she is. Um, I hope her game has improved. And I hope she's uh, happily married. Um, God bless her. God bless her. That's all we can say. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the fun stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> down with the mouse furries oh my lord sup cranberry uh let's see here yeah D um daisy duke have changed quite a bit from what i remember her. yeah daisy dukes yeah that's the new expression yeah is uh for daisy dukes it means uh it means uh chuck e cheese costumes i guess my goodness that is hilarious and that's another thing too when you're painting circles and your um and your your painting stuff you'll notice i do a few things i actually like to you plant my palm and then use the limitation of my palm being anchored to control the arc of the circle and so do you see what i mean when you do things like that it makes it a lot easier to have the control and so the the funny thing about it is there's being able to get artwork done um, you know, if you had unlimited time or, um, you know, if you didn't have to keep working, right? If it was the only time you were ever going to do it. And then there's being in a pattern to where you're not doing things that are going to tear your arm down or give you carpal tunnel in the long run. Because the more you stress your fingers trying to do things, the more it's going to actually hurt your hand control in the long run. Because the hand control should not just be about where your fingers are. It should be about what your your arm is doing. And so that's a huge part of this whole thing where I'm working. Damn, my camera work is shoddy today. Let me see here. Let me move. Yeah, put the bubbles on the floor. Let's zoom out so I have less trouble. Um, yeah, I think your watchers are proud of you and your work. There you go. Oh, well, my goodness. Aren't you guys wonderful? Channel member Cranberry Langos. Tammy, on the plus side, probably no gate is in your garage either. Agreed. Um I love how those are bubbles. Yeah, I'm so glad you like that. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. It's usually only in Florida. That's right. Um, put the bubbles on the floor. Absolutely right. Um, speaking of trying new things, I'm currently doing wavy reflections in glass. Wish me luck. Oh, see, but isn't that the stuff? That's great, Michael. Isn't that the stuff, though, that, that just keeps you going? Trying new things, man. That is what it's about. That is what it's about. There's the 2XL robot. That's terrifying, Stephen Rockwood. You guys are so fast. Um, it seems your memory is coming back. Absolutely right. Yeah. No, just in the canal behind my house and turtles have laid eggs in part of my yard. Wow. Oh, hey, Tammy A, says Cranberry Langers. 
I'm very proud to be supporting such a great looking piece of art. Thank you. I am very proud and grateful for your, to have your support, my friend. It is, guys, this, this is, it's always easy when the things are done and people are holding them in their hands to kind of see like, oh, wow, this is great. And like, oh, wow, you know, like it, with everything. But you guys are the people who are backing it and supporting me during this part of it, which is the really difficult part. And it is, it is never lost on me. And, and probably thank you so much for donating all those channel memberships, by the way, today. That is huge. I cannot overstate that. Cannot overstate that. Um, but it's, it's, I don't know how to describe it. It's like people want independent entertainment. They want entertainment free of all of this nonsense. But as you guys know, somebody has to get out there and they have to leave the security of, you know, the, the you know, insanity, as weird as that may sound, and put it out there and dedicate unbelievable amounts of time to doing it on their own. It's what makes what we do um, so difficult. If it was easy, as I know Eric July has said plenty of times, everybody would be doing it, but it's not. And it's you're constantly trying to spin plates. And I was serious about what I said at the start of the, the stream. Um, there are no vacations being taken by me. You know, like there's, I do things, I take, you know, I've taken trips with a, a trip with the family, but I have not really taken hardcore time off to just do stuff probably since I've started this project because I'm the kind of person to where when I'm working on something that's really tough I always think of something I should be working on and um it's it's um I'm getting better I'll get better at it but you know it's it's just you know you get to a point where people look at you and go you don't look so good <laughs> you look like you're about to collapse you know like I got uh I got four hours of sleep last night because I got really excited about working on the, the layout and InDesign on Nosferro man and it's crazy you know uh let's see here tammy a yeah turtles are cool lovely lady yes thank you awesome one uh yes thank you so much for those custom emojis in the chat i love seeing those those make me very happy michael bancroft is that the wavy reflections comment a wave in and of itself who is that wavy reflections comment a wave in and of itself that's very true wow that's that's profound man you guys are you guys are uh, taking me into intellectually deep waters right now my goodness but you know it's um when i was looking at when I was reading Frazetta or listening to the audiobook of Frazetta, not Frazetta, God, am I tired? When I was listening to the um, audiobook of um, of Lovecraft last night, I was thinking, this is just one dude. He passed away, really not much older than I am now, and he created this entire thing, you know, just out of thin air. And I think that's the, the and and he found us, you know, with Weird and all of those magazines that he was in, Weird Tales. He found kindred spirits and an audience that was longing for this stuff. And you won't know if the audience is out there unless you do it. And yes, it's risky and it's it has it's fraught with all of these different things. But we try to make it we try to make the risk fun for you guys to watch. Does that make sense? We try to make it fun. You know, yeah, get out once in a while. Maybe smell a tree. You're absolutely right. That's what my Mrs. and Jetty is here for. Man, I had completely forgotten about 2XL, guys. I'm telling you, I'm <laughs> for real. Um, been modding, uh, my friend's puppet stream. Very cool, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Deep waters, but I'm dumb. Yeah. You're absolutely right. But yeah. Lovecraft, baby. Lovecraft. A la B52 style. Yeah. Lovecraft, baby. Lovecraft. Yeah. Also another friend, um, on his birthday stream. Very cool. Awesome one. Awesome. You know, no, no pun intended on that. Awesome statement I just made. Um, but you know, it's, um, I look at Frazetta. And what Frazetta was able to do, influenced by, um, you know, Ari e. Howard's work, obviously. And, uh, you know, basically making that whole sword and sorcery illustration a massive genre of its own. And um, that my attitude is, why not try? You know, it's why not go out there, find and see if you have an audience. And if you do, swing for the fences and try to grow that audience as big as it possibly can get. And, um, and I know it all starts with this, this first stage of this. And having when you do something like comics, the tricky thing about it is, or, or even art books, but art books to me are faster, um, obviously. Um, there's so much in that initial push that you have to um, do. It takes so long to make that you know, initial project that you've got to have you know, great people behind you. And that's what all you guys are. You channel members, you book backers, all of you guys who are, you know, voting with your wallet 
you're making this culture possible. You're making what we're making here possible. And it all starts with, it all starts like that. You guys know this. You guys know this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> is a little old place. Yeah. Is an eldritch place where we can get together. It's Mankini's Draw Birthday. There you go. Loki was trying to get him to draw his story as a comic, making most, uh, uh, oh, Mankini mostly draws women. Got it. Well, yeah, that's right. Iconic, um, um, ironic how our comfort zones rarely ever help anyone else. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Yeah. Um, Hail Michael Bancroft, I stay inside my comfort zone, um, and it isn't working out so far. Yeah, I mean, guys, this is this is the crazy thing about it. Is that, and, and again, I, I'm going to give another shout out to, to Malin. So, wherever he is, I'm sure his ears are ringing. Here's my other shout out for him. The, the, the game-changing bit of advice for me was when John Malin said, I don't want to hear anybody else say anymore that they're introverts as to why they're not starting a YouTube channel and making, you know, making YouTube comments to promote their stuff. He said, I'm an introvert. We're all introverts. Get over it. It's not an excuse. And it's, it's weird because I was, I was teaching. So it's not like, um, it's, it's not like I was, you know, locked away, but the YouTube thing was completely new to me. And I just sort of said, well, it's going to be new and I just have to start doing it. And I don't want to ever be in a position again because I'm coming out of, you know, at that point I'm coming out of academia. I don't want to be in a position again of having to be dependent on other people for uh, my success or other people's, you know, names or brand like this college name or this thing. I want to make Shant and Jetty art into something because Shant and Jetty art is something that, that no one can take from me. And if it succeeds, it's going to be. Um, it's going to be all on what I'm able to to build with you guys. And you know who I was listening to, actually? Um, one of the people, oh my gosh, one like away from 30 likes? You guys are crushing it. Jeez, you took this uh, you took this algorithm uh, punch back seriously. But I was listening to, um, to Tom McDonald talking. Um, it was an old live stream of his that for some reason I just saw. And he was just talking about um, what it means to be truly independent and how it's like it's it's one more person it's you guys telling a friend about my channel hey subscribe to sean's channel hey guys come check out this stream when you guys share the stream out that's why people say it like if you got into the youtube space um in a different time things were different if you got into the instagram space before facebook bought it and started throttling it you could actually build things pretty quickly it's actually not as bad as it had been um a couple of a year or two ago when facebook got it, it was awful and you can absolutely you know, make a huge difference. It's one backer at a time, one subscriber at a time, one channel member at a time. That stuff adds up. That all makes it possible. So never think, well, if I, why do I need to become a channel member? Why do I need to back the book? That's crazy talk. Yeah, and anyone will tell you that. It's, it's, and Tom McDonald was talking about it. He goes, if, he goes, if, you know, he was talking about how, like, um, when people stream his music or, or on uh, Spotify, it takes 1,000 something streams to count as one sale that's how the record companies the billboard charts count it whereas if you buy the song for 99 cents it counts as one purchase think about that so i've always said to people my art books sold um a hundred and something copies or i forget how many it was you guys could look up my first two art books and i had thirty thousand um followers on instagram and i thought this doesn't translate into anything and he was talking about that it's like, it's great. I'm happy when people listen to my music on Spotify, but you got to understand if you want to really move the needle and we want to really make this culture war, you know, where you're getting content that's not insane and you want to really take it to the algorithm, liking, um, becoming channel members, they notice this and they move it, you know, and that's, that's what it is. You know, that's what it is. Sorry, let me go back. I've missed some stuff in the chat. Um, Aren't we as watchers in the chat currently in a box of sorts? Yes, we are. Think outside the chat box. It's true. We're all in a box. Absolutely right. Leave it to Malin to cut to the very heart. He does. He's, 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 I, I like, I like the way he thinks, man. Malin, you know what, with Malin, here's the amazing thing about him. He doesn't mince words and you know what you get. If he says he's going to do something, he does it. That's it. He follows through. And that's what's great about him. And he works his tail off. Yeah. Tom McDonald, the rapper. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm voluntary box i'm okay with there you go absolutely yeah love tom mcdonald julie yeah, absolutely hostman socrates 
I'm glad I don't have to do the yes indeedy. Oh, I'm not clicking on these. Hang on. I'm glad I don't have to do the um, the yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, me too. There you go. Had a weird error code saying resources have been exhausted. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you're better off indeed. Yeah, it's, it's exhausting stuff to keep track of, but you know what? It's the job. Um, well, I'd reference your stuff more, but I don't want to give you a bad image. <laughs> Grimmery Langers, you're hilarious. Um, take the standards back. Liberty, liberty, liberty. I love it. Awesome one. Um, from, uh, so from Cyrano, to walk in my own way and be free with an eye to things as they are. To cock my hat where I choose, never to make a line I have not heard in my own heart. Wow, that is beautiful, man. That is absolutely beautiful um malin takes the correct yeah correct takes absolutely right yes oh wait hold on a second here where is where is oh my gosh i have a channel member uh chat here tammy a where is it where is it where is it uh i'm almost to it. oh there we go tammy a celebrates two months of membership we can buy a membership for others yes how cool is that i love the um the content brother can't wait for no sparrow thank you tammy a that means a lot and thank you for being a channel member for two months much appreciation Michael Bancroft, with all modesty to say, my soul be satisfied with the flowers, with fruit, with weeds even, but gather them in the, um, the one garden you may call your own. Yes, I agree with that 100%. Um, there is a book, um, there is a book titled, When We Die, It All Goes Back in the Box. <laughs> there you go, you're absolutely right. Viva la liberté. Absolutely, John, 100%. That's why I love that channel member thing, you know, uh, and thank you guys, you channel members are awesome. I'm trying to take some uh, little steps, seeing the great benefit of stretching just a little. It's very important. Sheeple Hunter says, Malin um, is his generation's greatest philosopher. You're absolutely right. We all agree. Congrats at Tammy A for being a channel member. I love it. I love it. I love it. Tammy A, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, Michael Bancroft, uh, John says, um, updated your address change in Nosfero, Indigo. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, be sure to update your address. Yes, guys, absolutely right. And I'm going to send out a message um, oh my gosh, channel member for one month, Hostman Socrates says, celebrating one month of membership. Sean, when I draw, I cannot do eyes or mouths. Do you have any advice? Yes, I do. And by the way, two channel member chats, so I feel like I want to do this whenever I see a channel member chat, so. Charge! And for Tammy A. Charge! Thank you guys so much for being channel members. So, Advice for drawing um, eyes and mouths. Um, there's here's how I always word this. When I was teaching, um, when I was teaching at art school, what I always used to tell people is that teaching at art school is essentially um, like having somebody drive past you going 80 miles per hour, and you have to shout in the window as um, quick as you can a little bit of advice that they might be able to take with them. You have no time, so always keep it simple. So here's what I would say about both of those. The biggest mistake people make with drawing eyes whatever kind of eyes we're talking about is they draw an outline on the bottom don't do it let the line break if you let the line break you're gonna get more convincing eyes the other thing about eyes is wherever you see that white highlight on the other side that's where the light comes in I'm gonna put the pupil in there that's where you're going to see that brightest color of the eye. So if the eye's blue, you're going to see the brightest blue there, but the white is going to be on that side, and everything's going to get dark going in the opposite direction. With mouths, it's the same thing. When you're drawing a mouth, shadow there. Feel free to put a shadow in there, but don't over-accentuate where the light is hitting it, and put those shadows. Let your lines break. And so I always think, and it's weird because I'm drawing with white on dark, but you get the idea, which is let where light is happening break up the forms. And so when people draw eyes, the thing that always bothers me, particularly with um, with manga style, manga style, it's like Gundam style, um, people complete the lines. Don't complete that line, and you're going to get much more convincing eyes. So, yeah, that's my best advice I could say. Oh, my gosh, a super chat from Tammy A. I think is, our, is this our first super chat today? Holy cow. Um, we have gifted memberships from Improvi. Holy cow. Tammy A with a super chat. Um, let's see here. Um, still waiting for the booty shake. I will get that for you. For us, chicas. That's right. I'm going to come up with something for you, chicas. Don't you worry. Um, haha, for your vacation fun. Thank you so much. I promise at some point I will. Yeah, that's a uh, pastel paper I've got right there. Good catch, by the way. Gosh, one like away from 30. You guys are crushing it today. And let me get some uh, cheerleader. Again, my apologies, Tammy. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, don't complete the lines, Jonathan. Got it. Yeah, absolutely. That's a big part of it. Um, 80% of people's issues with drawing is they don't let the lines stand on their own. Yeah, absolutely right. Give them room to breathe. Let the eye be able to move. Don't, don't box people out with your drawing. And you'll see that happen a lot of times with me when I'm working. That I do that with my paint. I try to let things breathe a little bit. I try to let things open up just a little bit more. And um, it's, it's the key to doing it. And I think um, what's interesting is, is that uh, it's training you to understand value when you do those broken lines. And that's why when a lot of people who, who have a very um, systematic or formulaic way of drawing can't really do great paintings, no matter how, you know, um, how competent their drawings are, because the magic of drawing is, um, how do I put this? is this kind of um, mentality of open lines and not just doing them because you're supposed to, but at a certain point, just letting it have almost a symphonic quality um, to how you put your lines together. And I, I think that was the biggest thing I struggled with when I was doing my pen and ink stuff was how to leave the lines open. So I was doing a painted sketch that's kind of a line drawing sketch for some of the stuff I want to do for um, the backer stuff. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, even though it's more painted, you can see how I let the lines break. When I'm working on something like this, when I'm working on a doodle or a sketch on an index card, is I'm letting things kind of breathe. I'm not connecting the lines on the ears sometimes. Sometimes I'm breaking the lines. I'm going back in with opaque paint. And that's the stuff that really gives the kind of the power and the richness to it. And so, yeah, I always tell people, especially in digital, you can, um, you can 100% open your lines up way more than a lot of people do. Sometimes people turn it into a coloring book. Sometimes they're thinking about um, the fact that, you know, they're going to have to color it in and maybe it makes it easier. But I always say it's best to kind of construct your stuff um, without that particular thought because the drawing has to be alive. If you, if you, if you fill in your drawings, it's going to feel like they're filled in. I guess is the best way I would put it. Even if you look at someone like Mike Mignola's constructivist style, there's so many open lines and breakpoints that people who um, who imitate his stuff, if it's not good, that's that's what they lack, and that's why a lot of people can't do Frazetta. People try to always resolve over resolve when they try to quote paint like Frazetta. One, you can't really paint like Frank Frazetta. Uh, you got to paint like yourself. But the other aspect of it is first try to do a great painting, and that requires a certain amount of dare I say, uh, panache, um, and uh, it requires a certain amount of playfulness and if when you're working you're not able to play you can't ever get to that point if all you're doing when you're working is thinking about how did frank frazetta do that you're doomed but if you're sitting there and you're actually present with the paint i think my stuff has benefited tremendously from the fact that i was terrified of painting terrified of it so i never dreamed of being a painter i dreamed of being a pen and ink artist and so when i came over to painting it was fun it was magical and i didn't have all these these big people in my my mind who i was trying to do 40% uh, Z, that's half of it. There you go. Uh, let me see here. Private eyes are watching you. Yep. Don't be jelly yet, John. Might move again soon. There you go. Don't complete the lines is equal to don't cross the streams. It absolutely is. <laughs> so, there you go. Um, don't complete the lines where there would be shadows. Yeah. Or how, where there'd be highlights. So um, if, if light, how do I put this? When light hits your uh, lower lid, where the eyeball rolls into the lower lid, there is no line. So don't draw it. That's the main thing. Yes, indeed. Cheers to you, my friend. And probably it's great to have you here. And thank you for backing the channel. Thank you for all of those incredible gifted um, memberships. That's awesome. I'm trying to take a knock at drawing. Do it, guys. It's good for the soul. Try things. Dance, laugh, go for walks. Do what I <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Um, let the brain fill in the blanks. Absolutely. Yeah. Let the... How do I put this? It's it's weird because, you know, it's these, these solo streams are, are may seem kind of odd. But you you got to leave a, in this regard, but you got to leave a little breathing room for the audience. You can't try to control the audience with the work too much. Um, you can't like sometimes people get obsessed with, um, uh, you know, what they're going to make the audience think. And and I always think sometimes you you create artwork and people see something that you didn't really know was there. But it's it, the work is vital and it's, you know, or it has vitality to it. And, um, yeah, I just, I often think sometimes that when people paint their, um, the first stage of it, of course, is trying to make sure people can tell what the heck they're looking at. But you also have to remember that 
the reason we're looking at a drawing or a painting and not reality should at some you know point be that it's fun that it's aesthetic and that it's it's um it's good for the soul and I try to make the the paintings and the work that you guys are going to see in Nosferu. That's that's really the the that's what I put on it. Is is I've got to make sure that I'm in a, you know, when I'm making the work that that's what I'm focusing on. I shouldn't say even focusing on it. That I'm in the right state of mind, which is to say not over intellectualizing it and painting. You know, to me, painting doesn't happen in the in the you know in the intellectual part of the brain. It happens. It's muscle memory, and the more that you you kind of get to learn things the more you can not think about them when you work and that's why it takes so long um shout out to my plumber john davidson who came out and was incredibly helpful to me um on monday or i should say on friday sorry um and we'll be back on monday uh he knows what he's doing so well that he can think on his feet and his job all day is thinking on his feet it's the same with artists and illustrators and writers you know you have to um you have to have a story to tell and you can't lose sight of the fact that you're you're telling a story or you have to have a painting in your heart that you you need to make and not lose that as you gain skill and something beautiful to share with the audience i mean that's really a huge part of it sorry my glasses are falling uh let's see here um i'm jelly of sunshine places in industrial design we had a thing called professional dot essentially using a dot in place of full lines leaves it open but still closes it that is outstanding that is really cool i love that sark um, yeah, same thing with writing. Writers today are miserable. You're absolutely right, John. I think I see that. Mmm, this is Cranberry Langers. At Jonathan Jetty Art, um, that's why I like Kevin Eastman's art. I do too. It looks um, messy, yet hyper detailed. Yeah, I love Kevin Eastman's stuff. He's, he's great. It was a huge influence on me. Um, you might be then. Um, leave it to Sean to have a masterpiece doodle. <laughs> Guys are so funny. Um, it's okay. Everything in its due time. Absolutely. Draw like Bancroft. Absolutely agreed. Yeah, I don't want um, to over complete stuff. Right on. Um, Oh, cool. Mel bought some, um, about, um, bought, uh, I'm gonna try to read English. Mel brought home a print of Monet's flag painting in one of his most impressionist pieces. It's one of his most impressionist pieces. It's kind of a mess, but it captures more jubilance and spirit than any perfect image ever could. You're absolutely right. Siege Perilous at John. Hey, a man. And yep, very similar, equally important and, um, and a utterly, um, bereft, um, in the current crop. You're right. I overcomplete food. Oh, that's great though. I love overcompleting food. Sean, does speed drawing help train um, you to not overdo your art? That's a really interesting idea. Hmm. It depends on the person. Like with all things, I think it really depends because I have met um, I've met people who do speed drawing and they do a lot of fast sketches and they can't complete their stuff. So. Think about that for a minute. Um, I've because I've taught for I taught for eighteen years. I met students who did tons of speed drawings and never could finish their illustration assignments. So I think speed drawing can like all skills. Speed drawing will help you to get better at speed drawing. But I don't think that speed drawing directly translates into drawing better, and I don't think it directly translates into making finished illustrations. It's because there's so much of a grind to it. And I think that the um, the thing about it is is that um, when people see like really cool, you know, um, oh I can you know I can do a really cool sketch really really quick online, it is cool. There is no getting around it. That is a cool thing, and that is a skill in and of itself. But when people go, you know, why doesn't this person have a book or do comics or anything? Because that's actually completely a different skill, because that's where the grind comes in. So I'll put it this way. Um, one of the worst bits of canned advice art teachers give is make your finishes more like your sketches. And sketches are like babies. Sketches have unlimited potential. Oh, wow, 30 likes. You guys are crushing it. Um, sketches have unlimited potential, just like a newborn baby. But you don't want a newborn baby driving a car or flying an airplane. So it's throwaway advice. It's like every sketch would have been a masterpiece if it had been completed in, you know, but a legend in somebody's mind. Um, and the reality is, is that finished books and finished paintings are the skill set. So if you want to write novels, you've got to try writing a novel. Short stories are helpful, but short stories are different than writing a novel. Get practice writing a book and get to that point where you're like, I don't even know how to keep doing this. And it will teach you a lot. So I started drawing and making comics when I was about, you know, 12 or 14 or whatever. And, um, and 
that's how I've learned how to do this. That's why I know I can make a book. And so, yeah, I'd say that, that if you want to learn how to do something, do the thing. Do the thing completely, right? It's, so it's like um, I could go to the gym once, but if I want to be somebody who goes to the gym and actually exercises regularly, I have to practice exercising regularly until it's habit. Um, exercising once won't do it, and speed drawings won't teach you how to do finished stuff. It's weird. Does that make sense? I feel like I went on too long, but that's not a surprise, is it? Uh, let's see here. Yes, dancing, dig and swing. Yes. Um, are you opening a can of worms? Yeah, I absolutely am. My cousin teaches dance. There you go. Um, at awesome one, I got the second Gilgamesh book. Wow, going to go through it on stream soon. That is awesome. Yep, worms for fishing. Mmm, fish, cool. Um, why don't people like our terrible, um, like our terrible writing? Hmm, let's go on strike. <laughs> Maybe they'll like our stories. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, does that mean doing sketches more, um, throwaway work to keep your mind, um, intellectuals more creative? Uh, downside of taking a break, notifications got, um, got you set to all now. Thank you so much, Simply Green. I appreciate that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that's why I tell you the taking the break thing is really hard for me to justify. Um, Bancroft, did they give, um, go to, uh, give any, there you go. John, yep, one of my favorite places. It's one, it's only about 10 minutes away from where her parents live. Wow, that's awesome. A baby driving a car, Greta Thumb. That's a really good example. I'm not kidding. That is absolutely what we're talking about. Very cool. It's one of uh, my favorite places too. Always love Monet's work. There you go. Well, the gray beards are all indulging looser styles and enjoying uh, the change. Exactly. And I would say this too. After, in many ways, after a lifetime of, of you know, building all of those skills. And I think that's, that's a really cool thing. There's different rules, oddly, shockingly, for um, different levels you get to. And, you know, like, for example, you see um, amazing boxers who drop their hands when they fight. And young guys coming up go, well, they drop their hands. And it's like, yes, because they can. You drop your hands, you're going to get knocked out. And so I always say that, that that's really what it comes down to. And here's the other thing, too, is that um, what you do in one particular area with comics or anything else, I've found, um, tends to, to hang out there. So you have to consciously try to change what you're doing and um, in order to make a change in a new place, if that makes sense. But yeah, I mean, th those guys are great. Uh, muscle memory is strong enough to break the rules to be creative. Um, uh, yeah, it, yes, it's it's all ingrained. Yeah, I think that makes sense, especially the getting to the gym part. Yes, how dare you. Um, Sean Thinter, the art, Writer's Strike 2008. No, don't cancel Sarah Connor Chronicles and Deadwood. Writer's Strike 2023, please cancel She-Hulk and Velma, I beg you, yes. The only shows I'm worried they cancel are Arcane and The House of the Dragon. Agreed. So yeah, so the thing the thing about it all is this, is that um, when... One of the things my friend also says as a teacher is he'll run into students who talk about how they want to be, they're an aspiring animator and they want to animate and they want to do X, Y, or Z. And he always says to them, oh, my back. Let's see if I can crack that. Ah, not so well. But he'll often say to them, he'll go, um, well, have you done any animation? Right? Like, if you, if you love animating, have you done any animation? And if they say no, he's like going, well, then how do you know you want to do this? And I always say with the tech we have at our disposal, there is so much opportunity to explore and try things like animation and try things like painting and drawing. And um, I'll give you a really good example. So I've been playing around with, um, gosh, I'm trying to find the right stuff. I've been playing around with uh, animation lately. And here's the thing that blew my mind. When I was in school, and I was doing, um, and I was doing animation stuff, and I was studying animation. We had books, and these books in, had in them still images. And the thing about those still images was you couldn't figure out what the heck was happening on either side of it, or timing, or any of that stuff. And I'm, by the way, I'm going to pronounce it uh, GIF because it's spelled with a G and it stands for graphics. I don't care what the creator of it says, but you can go online now, and you can find animated GIFs of Tex Avery animation and the pencils if you want to learn how to animate. You can drag those pencils down to your desktop and you can look at them frame by frame by frame. You can look at the timing of video. It is such a different world um, than where you're coming from, as some would say. Um, and I always think, you know, when I, I look at stuff, I go, why aren't we having more people try to really perfect their animation? I'm going to have a controversial opinion here. Are you ready? Yeah, the creator is wrong. It's Jeff. Yeah, because it stands for graphics. It doesn't stand for graphics. Mm. But 
Yeah, that'll help the arm. Um, but this is the thing that I come back around to, right? Is that I was watching Who Framed Roger Rabbit uh, recently and looking at the Jessica Rabbit animation, and I'm gonna, here's my controversial opinion. It's not that good. Um, that figure, and I loved it when I was a kid. I was like, wow, this animation's so good. Roger Rabbit's so amazing. Those characters are so floaty. And when you look at Tex Avery's uh, Red Hot Riding Hood animations, she, her shoulders, you feel like she has a skeleton when she steps, when she moves. It's completely convincing. It doesn't feel like warpy soup. It's so hard to do, and we can study that stuff. It's there for us to study. It's so cool. Yeah, Giraffics. Giraffic Park. Um, I always laugh at those pronouncing it GIF. Yeah, it drives me crazy, but I understand. Uh, Hashant agrees with me about GIF. Yeah, that's right. GIF, yeah, there were a lot of, of GIF artists back in the day, yes. And we could raise the level of that. Um, speaking of uh, ailments, how's your back doing now, Sean? It's doing way better, but I still need to be, you know, getting out and walking and doing things. And It's just, you know what it is? There's, um, so, here's a little bit of fun and excitement. So, we had our... Um, we had our shower, uh, one of our shower uh, knobs bust and had to get a plumber out here and do all of this stuff. And it's and this stuff is all important because otherwise to get the water to stop running, we had to shut off all the water to the house. And stuff like that, which is important to deal with, just eats a tremendous, tremendous amount of time. And I'm one of those people where I will move everything else to take care of the stuff that my family needs, obviously. I'm sure a lot of you guys are that way. And so... Those are the things sometimes I get into that just I push stuff back and I got to get better at it. I got to get better at just like, you know, organizing myself in that way. Um, but yeah, I'm doing great. I mean, shoot, I mean, there's people who, uh, yeah, sup, Simply Green. Yeah, much love for Simply Green. Um, I agree. There you go. I've never seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but I do believe Land Before Time to be superior. It's still a great movie and I enjoy the hell out of it, but it's just, it was interesting for me to go back. I partly blame memes for the quick art style. One doesn't have to be perfect, um, doesn't have to perfect an art style when anything is accepted. Well, here's the interesting thing, right? In a world where anything is accepted, it still doesn't mean anything lasts. And the stuff that lasts and the stuff that becomes memes is typically coming from, not always, but from stuff that we, um, that was a part of something iconic. And the real power of that iconic thing comes from, from understanding what it's a reference to. But I don't see anybody making a lot of new permanent culture. And I think it's because the quality isn't there. You know, the quality is not, um, is, it's not, it's not coming together as it should. So I'll show you a little example of something I'm working on real quick. Let me see if I can do this. I'm going to mess this up so much. Brace yourselves here. All right. So let me see here. Let's try choose a file. Uh, let's see here. I don't know if this is... No, that's not it. That's not it. Let me see if this works. All right. Open. There we go. So here is a run cycle that I've been working on for uh, the fan dance. Obviously, I haven't got the outfit on her yet, and I haven't gotten the, uh, the, the animation sorted. But this is an example of me working out stuff in such a way that it, it comes together, hopefully, and turns into something that works. Um, and so that's kind of my attitude. Um, and let me see if this works. No, that didn't work. Never mind. I'll go back here. Go back to this main, and then I have to duplicate again. But that's kind of, that's my process when I'm doing this stuff, you know, is, is trying to figure new things out. Uh, let's see here. Shanth Art, uh, Shanth Entity Art, your arm feeling fine? Yeah, it's all right. It, it is what it is. Timmy Mello, it's great to see you. Hail channel member Timmy Mello. It's so great to see you, man. Uh, yes, uh, 240 and 180, um, both scale nicely to 16 by 9. That's true. Agree with Roger Rabbit Art? Yes. Abs yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I mean, it's beautiful, but I just think it's too floaty. Laugh out loud. I shan't, shan't, shan't was going to say <laughs> wedding shower, uh, then thought his kids were too young. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're totally right. Uh, what's up, Timmy? Yeah, that's right. Timmy is here. Timmy is in the house. It's great to see you. Yeah. <laughs> You're terrible graphics. Yes, that's right. Schmexy. There you have it. Um, I'm braced. There you go. Speaking of GIF, what is everyone's favorite peanut butter? Mine is Peter Pan. There you go. Your character's entirely, uh, because Molly Coddles is a great name. Yeah, yes, yeah. 
it is it is um it is my character entirely though it, it's influenced by a ton of different stuff obviously um but yes um and i wanted to create um a, a funny character yeah yeah careful with the boobas papa susan is watching yes that's right yeah creamy jiff that's right jiff is great um looks nothing like me i know i apologize love the flapper girl animation thank you so much hmm like peanuts that's <laughs> out loud yes extra crunchy skippy there you go butter that is yes and so what i started thinking about is is not just the action but it's thinking about what's going to happen in um in the world of like if i want to do more cartoony stuff like i do with mugsy and molly um and you know how where do i want that to go and, and how do i just kind of make stuff that's funny and playful so i started looking at tex avery i started looking at um ub iWorks, one of my big time heroes and we'll see where it goes you know we'll see what i but it's all learning at this point but i do think that um how do i word this i like that the bar is low for gifts i like when the bar is low in some ways for art but only to the extent that it makes people feel more brave because they're like, well, I could do better than this, so I'm going to try something. If the bar is low and nobody tries to do anything interesting when, you know, quote unquote, the powers that be aren't working or when you're not being, you know, roasted for every little thing that you do, then it's it's all for naught. And so for me, I want to do animation that's absolutely, you know, playful and fun, you know, finally cooling down. There you go. Or store brand. That's good, too. Yeah, you got to do uh, the classic speakeasy scene. Yes, I do. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, guys, I'm that's not the only thing I'm working on. I'm working on a bunch of other little animated things. But when people say, like, where do you get the time for this? When I was doing all of those intro videos, and I still help out and do stuff for, for people when they ask me to, um, you know, my, my you know CG friends. Um, but I was doing a ton of animation work. I'm always working. I just never thought of you know doing stuff and crediting my channel members in the credits like because they're the producers of this stuff and i was so that was what excited me about doing the animation the most is letting people know what what you're what we're paying for in our space when you guys get this book go yeah i made this happen i backed this book look at it it's fully painted this person worked for 40 something years of his life to try to get to this high level of competency and i said i believe in rewarding that that's it. This person is positive. He's honest. He's straightforward with us. He cares about what we're doing in this space. And he, he, he's just trying to always bring something positive to it. I care about that. I want to support this person. It's never lost on me. I wake up every single day so grateful. And, you know, yeah, some days I get tired and some days I'm just kind of like, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a human being like everybody else, I hope. Um, and, uh, you know, but but I, 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 that's when I just say, all right, let's take a beat. Let's get ourselves right. Let's get ourselves centered and let's get back to work because that's what it is. Yes, you did, Stephen Rockwood drawing. Let me tell you something right now. You walked into the fire. You walked into the wood chipper here, brother. This crazy maniac, Stephen Rockwood drawing, has been ride or die with me for so long. I appreciate him so much. First channel member, always excited, telling me what the count is on the number of backers. I love you, brother. Thank you for your support, man seriously and i hope you're having a wonderful sunday and thank you for always being here and being so supportive and that goes for all of you guys who are regulars but stephen rockwood especially has worked his ass off promoting this book and being just being positive like i try to work hard being positive when i see other people being positive it's so important to me because the grind i have to do in addition to that is a lot um that's going to be so cool sean can't wait yes guys i love putting your names in the credits you know this on the show every time people are channel members it makes me smile i stole that idea well, the channel I stole it from, I don't know where they got it from, but was Echo Base Network. I saw that and I go, what a great thing to put your channel members at the end of your show or at the start of your show or however they do it. Because I like Coach and I love Nick because Nick was at the first Fandom Menace meetup with uh, Ethan and all those guys, with uh, Jeff and Jeremy way back when. Um, and um, I know a lot of water under the bridge, but I still remember Ethan pulling up on the live stream uh, at Star Wars Celebration, and if you look, it's Nick from Echo Base Network who goes, Are you Ethan? Hey, I'm Nick. And they started a channel, and uh, a Star Wars channel, and it's Echo Base Network, and they do a lot of great work, really positive folks, and just gotta love those guys. So shout out to them, and shout out to Ethan, and shout out to the old school. Uh, yes, indeed. 
Uh, let's see, 34 likes and counting. Smash that like as if you were next door neighbor's face. There you go. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much, Stephen Rockwood. Drawing. For some reason, I've seen five to ten different species of wasps oh, on the flower and a few bees. Weird. Yeah, I'm terrified of wasps, man. I got trapped in an old Valari station wagon with a nest, and it was not good. Hey, what's up, my brother? Gross Point Dank. How to Draw Comics by Dan Lawless. You can't get more beautiful artistic color than that piece. Oh, jeez. Thank you, Dan. My brother from Gross Point Woods. It's great to see, brother. I hope we get to meet in real life and uh, shoot the bull about Gross Point Woods, brother. Um, it, always a blast, dude. We gotta do a phone call at some point and shoot the bull. It's been ages, man. Yeah, Stephen Chase Shanth all around the country during his moves. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He did. God bless him. He's lived with me in every major state. We were born in the same town. We were in the same bassinet when we were born. Yeah, well, thank you, Sean. Thanks for everyone backing. Cranberry Langers, you're another ride or die. I've known you since way back, man. You've been back in this channel. And don't ever think I forget it, man. Really appreciate it. And all of you guys who are new, I want to see more new people, more new names in the chat, more new channel members. That's what makes this great, man. It's Guys, it's such a shot in the arm. It really is. Because you guys know, I can't, not all the work is obviously happening on stream. There's another 22 hours in the day, typically. Um, but, man, I'm working like crazy, and it's never... When I see, like, oh, someone commented to say, cool, neat to see that. Like, comments are so great to see when you guys comment on old streams. You know, open another window and comment on an old stream. It's crazy how that helps. Uh, let me see here. And I'm inspired by people like Eric July and, and Tom McDonald and all these independent creators and and just really connecting with people. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Tammy A. I really do appreciate you being here. Oh, Echo Base. I watched them for a bit. Yeah, they're super fun. It's hard to watch their hearts get broken about Star Wars, but they're great guys, and they're, they're for real. Coach and, uh, you know, Coach and Nick are good people. I like those dudes. Oh, my sister got stung on her eye. Oh, man, yeah. Oh, and we had a, a, one of the guys who uh, frequents uh, Double Impact Diesel got stung in the throat by a, a wasp, and I was mortified by that. Holy cow. Yeah, I had to lie down and sleep afterwards. It's rough. Echo Base is starting a second non-Star Wars channel. Good for them. Good for them. Man, have they been burned by the stupidity of Star Wars. Um, I was with them with uh, the end of second season of Mandalorian, and when Gina went, I went. I was like, I'm out of here. But, I mean, I still love them, but I left uh, that whole thing. Yeah, laugh out loud, same bassinet. Yeah, oh, wasps don't bother me. If you're not afraid of wasps, then we can hang out and you can handle them because they freak me out completely. Uh, there's so many things I'm not afraid of, but wasps, when I hear that sound, it freaking reminds me of that damn thing. Hopefully not like... Um, the, the, the tininess uh, shot in the arm. Yeah, it doesn't... Yeah. The, <laughs> syringes don't bother me at all, man. Thanks, Shoth. It doesn't feel long. Um, I love your art. So um, um, so less altruistic that way. It's like eye candy. You guys are all doing so much great stuff for me. And I appreciate it. I've only been stung by a hornet and bees. Yeah, I've been stung by a wasp, but not a hornet. Yeah, oof. Yeah, it's not a good thing. Yeah, rest in peace, Star Wars. Condolences, Anna, that Star Wars girl. She knows what I'm talking about. Yep. Yeah, my mom got stung on the tip of her tongue. Oh, my lord ouch yeah guys i mean i'm telling you what man it's uh, I, those things are so freaking painful like they are so painful like a wasp sting feels so different to me anyway than um than other kinds of stings man it's like i i just it, it felt because i've been yeah i mean i've had obviously lots of you know shots and things like that but there was just a special kind of pain from a wasp sting. I mean, those things sting you with bad intentions, you know? Uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, it's good to see you, Turhiki. It's great to see you, my friend. How are you doing? Uh, let's see here. Uh, wasps are tiny alien robot killers, scary little things. That's why I support Cyberfrog. You got to fight the, the wasps, those nasty... Guys, I'll tell you what. Still, I don't know. Do I have it here? Oh, yeah, here it is. I always have it nearby. One of my absolute favorite bits of art I've ever done. Um, is the cyber frog trading card art I did for Ethan. Yeah, I do not like the swarm. There's my um, my dead uh, Vespa right there, if I can get it to focus. There it is. Hopefully some of you guys who got that card enjoyed it. Um, I really love doing it, and I'm really happy with how it came out, man. Such great stuff. Yeah, they are fine if you don't attack them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we startled them because they were in the car, uh, and uh, then we braked, and it shook up the nest. Um, Sean the Jetty Art, the Mr. Brown Alliance, another channel I frequent who is streaming right now, did reviews of the Mando Season 3. They were hilarious streams. <laughs> you should check them out. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, everyone, and hello to you, my friend. On the tip of her tongue, I bet it stopped her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rough. Stephen Rockwood. No, sir. Yeah, wasps, yellow jackets, vespas. I hate those bees to pieces. Absolutely. 
Um, I used to think if you um, leave wasps alone, they won't sting you. Nope. That's, I, yeah. I've, wa I've been chased by them, followed by them. They are territorial and not cool. Yeah, this last May the 4th, I wasn't really feeling like saying May the 4th be with you, although I still love the original trilogy, Han Shot First. There you go. Um, that's what I get for relying on my spelling and spell checker, I suppose. Yeah. Um, Hostman Socrates, uh, Shanth and Jetty Art, where can I get uh, that trading card? Also, my copy of Wrecked Planet is um, at the mail. Awesome! Um, you'd have to reach out to Ethan about it. It was a, um, I think it was a Patreon exclusive or channel member exclusive. I'm not sure which one. Um, let's see here. What about Blackie Lawless? Um, as I sit among my flowered bush surrounded by wasps. Laugh out loud, you scare me, man. Michael Bancroft, crack it up, uh, Cranberry Langers. Most vindictive creatures in the animal kingdom, agreed. Awesome one, uh, crack it up, Tammy A. Um, wasps are evil and it brings me to joy. <laughs> and there was <laughs> Oh man, the chat's taking a turn. The chat's taking a turn. Yeah, I mean, um, I, for me, like, you know, when I look at, at, you know, just, I, I have so many memories of being chased in the South. Like, they would just be in the hedges and it was just like they would just get they were mean mean little bastards but what are you gonna do it is what it is god's creatures what can you do just one of god's creatures trying to uh i feel like i just went into bob ross mode there a little bit um it's important to surround yourself with critters yes it is we're just gonna paint a primordial serpent here and a vampire priestess just reclining ever so slightly. It's my world, but it's your world too. Back knows Pharaoh the Cryptwalker. That's right, do it. If you want to show your support for fine programming like this, make sure you share it out to people. Make sure you let people know uh, that we're having fun over here and that it's okay. It's okay to be in this space. That's right. We get together for a couple hours every now and again get together for a bit and we just have a good old time we let the we let the big old world out there we, we let that fade away we let that fade away so we can enjoy ourselves because we got control in this world it's just it's our painting it's our world anything can happen anything can happen that's right there it goes just dance the brush across the paper just like just like you dance it across now I'm done with this color so let me wash the brush I'm just gonna beat the devil out of it just beat the devil out of it there it is there it is there we go just like that now I'm gonna go in uh, grab a little bit right here just gonna go right in right in here on the canvas to a little, to a little male and white. That's right. We're gonna grab a little bit of male and white in our world. There we go. There we go. Just gonna put a highlight, and maybe, 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 maybe that highlight has a little friend right over on that side. There it is. There it is. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a highlight back in here and it's gonna push that shadowed area in front of it forward. That's what we do because a, a light color in atmospheric perspective will push a dark color forward like that. Now, yours doesn't have to look like this. If yours looks different, that's okay. Remember, it's your painting your world there are no mistakes just happy accidents in here that's right that's right there we go it helps if you make those sounds there you go <laughs> that's right guys there you go there's your look uh it's getting weird sean it's getting weird yeah, my attitude is hold it until it's utterly uncomfortable. Damn right. Bob Ross in it like a pro. <laughs> Happy little bush. Uh -huh. There you go. Happy little ghostly miss. <laughs> Kill it with fire. <laughs> this 
this is actually relaxing. Oh my god, you guys are hilarious. It's getting weird, Shop. I love it. He's lost it. Yeah, he never had it in my case. I've lost it long ago, I that, but I agree, Stephen. Shout out to Jenny Art. Uh, you're giving me flashbacks to the Crowder skit where he made him off of you and saved your life. <laughs> Terrifying. Oh my god, you guys are cracking me up. <laughs> Thanks, Mrs. Z, for letting little artist and Jenny come out and play with us today. She she is more than happy to do that, and uh, I will pass that along. Happy little priestess, that's right. Tammy is a nurse, in her medical opinion, Shant has lost it. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Gone by level. That's totally true, man. Totally true. Yeah, oh my lord. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the joy of it, guys. That's the joy of madness slash painting. Oh my lord, guys. But we have fun, don't we? We do have some fun in here. Um, so yeah, I mean, every little aspect of this is going to be handcrafted, hand-mailed to you, just like every other creator in this space. So when you guys are out there, and I know you guys do a great job of get, sharing the stream out, promoting the stuff, thank you guys for hitting the like, and thank you guys for for always being here and, and, and being so supportive of what we do. But don't ever let anyone tell you that there is nothing you can do to change the lack of, of, of quality and entertainment and also just the ideological and political poisoning of escapism. You're doing a lot just by being here. And tell them that if they want to be supporting this kind of stuff, shout out the stuff that you're liking and, and really tell them, as we always try to do on this channel, tell them that it's fun that it's fun in here that we're having a great time and that we're making cool stuff and being a part of something and being a backer is the ultimate way to participate in assisting the creation of new work it is it is on its own level um, because you guys pay for and back the creation of the work and that's why the book exists and that's why we're making something incredible here. And that's why I love getting up and making this stuff for you guys. Shanth Bob Ross Jetty. <laughs> Bob Ross Jetty, you're right. Um, I just love you guys. Uh, thanks for the laughs. I'll definitely need uh, some laughs Tuesday after 9.30. We got you back. I was just relaxing with my delivered Starbucks listening to Bob Ross Shanth. Ah, that's right. How to draw comics with Dan Lal is just best. Yeah, that's right. Um, it was uncomfortable at first, but then strangely comforting. <laughs> Green laser, Sean, Bob Ross, Jetty. Um, but Star Wars was always political, right? Yeah, please. Politics is where art goes to die, right, guys? Um, yeah, big Irishman. <laughs> That's right. There you go. And Green Laser, thank you for being here and thank you for being a channel member. So, guys, I'm going to go grab something to eat. Um, and uh, I want to thank you guys for being here. I'm going to have my channel member credits. I will be updating the channel member credits with all of you guys who have been gifted memberships by Improbi. And, of course, Improbi is always in the credits because he's been ride or die channel member from the start. Uh, thank you guys so much. It has been a blast doing some painting with you guys. Um, wherever you guys are, whatever day of the week it is, I want to wish Michael a happy Monday um, and all my Australian brothers a happy Monday and New Zealand brothers. And I want to wish all of you guys in the chat a wonderful rest of the Sunday, um, if it's Sunday where you are. And uh, just have a great day, guys. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you guys so much uh, and everything you do to support the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Thank you, yeah, John knows. Sunday, Monday, everyone, absolutely right. Hail, how to draw comics with Dan Lawless. Says, Michael, thank you so much, guys. It was great to see you, Sean, and, um, and chat family. Thanks, John. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Yeah, everybody have a great day. Thank you, Stephen Rockwood, as always. It's all from the heart. Great stream, as always. Thank you, Michael. Much love, brother. Timmy Mello, thank you, sir. You are the man. Thank you for having my back, guys. I appreciate you. Duck Bacon, much love seeing you here, guys. Um, I'm going to head out, take care, and as I always say, guys, speak easy, stay gold, and remember, my name means peace, and have a wonderful and peaceful day, um, because there's great stuff out there, so enjoy it and chase it down. Take care, Terhiki. It's great seeing you, my friend. John, take care, everybody, and I will see you guys soon. Uh, stay gold, speak easy, and peace.